Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, you champions? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the UMP. I really do appreciate you. If you've been listening for a long time, brother, you know what to do. Smack yourself on the ass so hard when the concussion hits. It blows the mustache off your best friend's face because you are a goddamn champion. And I really, really appreciate you tuning back in. I try to deliver the content and I'm going to do so today. I know oftentimes you see a girl in a nightclub, bar, restaurant, grocery store, wherever it might be. And you just can't handle the hotness. You want to target her. She is exactly your type. I know for me, sometimes I walk into a nightclub and I'm just like, like a bird dog, right? You see the hottest girl ever and you just can't help yourself, man. You want that girl. She is so unbelievably your type. I get clients to tell me all the time. They're like, man, I just love that fat ass. And I'm like, listen, bro, I respect that you love a big ass, but fat and girl are two words that in my opinion should never be put together. But what I'm trying to tell you here is that we all have our type. I like thin girls who are really in shape, tight bodies, tight asses, just a really fit girl. Some guys like that, but donk donk butt where you slap one butt cheek and a wave goes across, hits the other butt cheek and comes back and hits your hand back. That's the kind of chick that a lot of guys like these days. And brother, I cannot relate. I just don't understand it. But it seems like that's really trendy right now, right? I like big butts and I cannot lie. I don't like big butts and I cannot lie. I like a tight fucking ass. I like a girl who's really in shape. And sometimes when I see a girl like that, I'm like, yo, I just got to target this girl. And I know oftentimes I tell you guys that you want to be social with everybody. You never want to only have your hopes pinned on one girl because when you do that, what do you become? outcome dependent. You're dependent on an outcome and then you become needy, you act incorrectly, you become stifled, you go into what I call screensaver mode and you turn into a goddamn sea donkey. Why is it oftentimes that when we talk to hot girls, we can't think? It's because adrenaline. It's because we want it to go so well that we actually shoot ourselves in the foot. So the best thing to do is to not give a shit about what happens, talk to everybody, the chips will fall where the chips fall, and that's the best attitude. But I do understand that sometimes you really want to target a girl. Now, for you guys listening, I know you know this answer, but I want to actually put this question to the females listening. How long do you think it takes for a guy to determine that he's attracted to a woman? All the guys listening right now are laughing because they're like, dude, it takes no time at all, and that's correct. It takes less than two seconds. This has been scientifically studied that when a man looks at a woman, he can decide within just a few seconds if she's his type. Why? Basically a body scan. You look from the face to the toes and you do a quick assessment. We are like massively quick supercomputers that can assess very quickly whether or not she's our type. I have another question for you guys, and maybe some of you gentlemen will not know this. What is it that our attraction is based on? Why is it that looks are so important? It's all based on health signs. If she looks healthy, what can she do? She can have a baby. So your entire attraction, and this is weird, I want you to think about this one. Your entire attraction for a woman is based on whether or not you think she can have a healthy baby. Now it varies depending on each individual dude, but even you guys who like that badonkadonk butt, which I'm sorry, I can't relate to that, Those are health signs of a woman who's voluptuous, another word that makes me cringe. She's healthy. She has good skin. She has good hair, good hip to breast ratio. She has clear teeth, clear eyes. She just looks healthy. And because of that, she can have a healthy baby. My version of health is like being in shape, being fit. But I like the same thing, right? I like clear skin, clear eyes, good teeth, good hair. These are all health signs. A woman's attraction for you, and you guys should know this, is based on your survivability. Why is that? Because if you can survive, if you can be very successful in today's society, that means you're going to pass genes on to the children that is going to make them very successful in society. So isn't that weird? Attraction's all based on the baby. Kind of creepy if you really think about it, but it makes sense from an evolutionary perspective. So I took a very long time to make one single point. 
which was when you see a girl that's your type, she's your type. What are you going to do? We are going to run a very systematic process in order to try to get that girl. Now, am I guaranteeing you're going to get her? No, because there's a myriad of circumstances. For all we know, she's engaged. For all we know, you simply aren't her type. For all we know, she got into a fight with her boyfriend that she's dating off and on. We just don't know. But I do know that you guys want to get that girl. And at least I guarantee you that you're going to get into a conversation with her. So let's say we go into an environment like a nightclub, a bar, a party, a social gathering, and bam, there she is. Let's say you go bowling with your friends and it's the friend of a friend and she's so banging, you literally get a boner when you look at her. First tip, hide the boner, bro. Don't walk over to her with the Statue of Liberty in your pants, pointing at her like a tent in your crotch and be like, hey, my name's Mike. Nice to meet you. Get rid of the boner, bro. I remember when I was like big time in the dating scene, when I would date like a really hot girl, a girl that was so unbelievably my type, it was a little embarrassing. I used to wear like extra small underwear just to keep that fucker pinned down, dude. Like pin him to the ball sack, get a goddamn rubber band and just like pin him down because that's what happens. Especially when you make out with a really hot girl, we're guys, we get boners. I've seen so many dudes in the nightclub who are just flossing a tent in their pants when they're making out with chicks or worse boys. And girls laugh at this all the time when you're dancing with the girl and you're like grinding on her and then you get a boner the size of the Statue of Liberty, not a good look. So wear that extra tight underwear, that Mark seeing size extra small to prevent that shit from happening. So that's tip number one. But that's a funny tip and I want to get serious now. So obviously, boys, the more girls you can have around you when you first enter any social scene, whether it's a nightclub, bar, party you go to, whatever it may be, the better. Now, here's another question for you. Does it matter if the girls who are your friends are attractive or not? I would rather have you walk in with an unattractive group of girls than nobody, but I would prefer that you walk in with attractive girls. So what I'm saying is unattractive girls are better than nothing. Hot girls are the best of all. So first and foremost, we really want to try to build up our social circle, our friend circle. These are girls who you're friends with, who you just keep as friends and who you go out with. But let's say you don't even have that. You walk into a nightclub with your friend, you guys stand in line, pay cover, do the standard thing. Or again, you go into bowling with your friend and there's a chick who's a friend of a friend and you want to target that girl. So what we need to do is we need to work up to her. We don't want to necessarily directly approach her. Although in a social situation, you're going to be introduced to her. When you're introduced to her, just meet her like you meet everybody else. Don't telegraph your intentions, right? Don't have that smile that's all teeth, like all your Christmases came in the same day, which is what you're going to want to do, which is what you're going to want to do. And I want you guys to really pay attention to how you're behaving. When you're talking to a girl who you really like, you can't help but smile. Why? Feels good, man. Her femininity, her hotness, even the way she smells, the way her voice sounds, it's just intoxicating. And what happens? That smile starts creeping across your face. Before you know it, it's like connected in the back of your head with a goddamn rubber band because all your birthdays, Christmases, all the heavens that you've ever imagined that'll happen after you died – all came to you in one moment and you're so fucking stoked and you're flossing a boner the size of the Sears Tower. Not a good look. Meet her just like anybody else. And if you want to, you could even be a little bit aloof towards her, which is what I suggest. Now, do I think that you should treat a hot girl differently than you treat everybody else in a social situation? No, treat her exactly the same. But the reason why I coach you to be a little bit aloof towards her is because you're going to be so pumped that she's there and you're going to be inadvertently telegraphing that you're more interested in her. Just by the way you stand, you're going to sneak little glances at her. You're going to like look through the window that goes into a mirror that bounces off her ass and you're going to be like staring at it. We telegraph this shit. So brother, watch your telegraphs. And what that means is treat her like anybody else. Equanimity in the face of all people is the mark of a true master. An enlightened master is the same among everybody. He meets the president. He's the same as he meets a bum. And that's the way I want you to be with chicks. Me, as I've said, I don't like that badonka donk ass. So I'm going to treat the hot girl and pretend that she's got a badonka donk butt that could wrap around my head if she sat on my face during a sexual experience and then I'd die. 
That's the way I imagine these chicks. When I see a girl with a flat tummy, with a belly button ring and a tight ass and a thigh gap that you could park a Volkswagen bug in, I'm like, oh my God, dude, this is so my type. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm getting a boner. Should have worn the tight underwear, the Mark Singh extra smalls. Just imagine her as a fat chick. Treat her the same. Now, let's go back into the nightclub example. Okay, you walk in with your friend. Horrible, by the way. I so prefer you guys to walk in with girls. Please work on that first. If you're just starting to get better with women, just go meet friends. I'd rather hand you a fishing pole than a fish. So you walk in with your friend. You guys do the obligatory fucking stand in line, pay cover, go buy a drink at the bar, and then stand next to the bar with your drink in front of you looking all insecure. As much as I hate that, if that's the way it starts, we are going to coach on the horrible way to start rather than the best way to start, which is to walk in with a bunch of hot chicks. So you're there. What do you do? Okay. You see the girl in the corner. She's exactly my type, which by the way is the best type. Your type? It's a bad type, bro. You need to get on the my type. Here it is. 5'8", platinum blonde, straight hair, bangs, freaking thin, in shape, tight ass, flat tummy, smallish tits, like BC cup, just because I like them like really perky and just banging, bro. That's the best type. That's the one that you need to adhere to if you want to be an alpha champion. I'm just fucking with you. Let's go with your type, bro. Badonka donk butt, freaking bat wing flapping over her bra on her back because she's got so much back fat. I know that's what you like. So you see that girl. Okay, how do you get her? Do you just roll up to her and say, hey, my name's Mike. Nice to meet you. I thought you were cute. Wanted to come talk to you. You could. Do I think it's the best way? Fuck to the no. Fuck to the no. We have to think chess, bro, Tendo, not checkers, Theodore, Roosevelt. You got to think outside the box. So I want to put it to you. What do you do? If pre-selection, which means having other girls around you is so important, what do you do? You're there alone. Are you really alone? No, there's tons of girls around. So you begin by opening girls that you feel are safe. You just get talkative, get into the flow. I want you warmed up, bro, teen shake. I don't want you going in cold. You ever try to open a girl cold? You turn into a sea bass. You can't talk, screensaver mode. You're a fucking robot and you're like moving all weird and you can't think and you do insecure mannerisms. And she's like, uh, not interested. Like my other podcast episode, how to tell when a girl's not interested. So what you do is you open other girls and here's the secret. You merge groups, merge groups, merge groups, merge groups. What does that mean? That means you introduce this group to this group. I just met this group five minutes ago. Now I'm talking to this group over here. Is the group that I met five minutes ago my friends? Yeah, because I just met them. They're my friends now. So I introduce them. Hey guys, come over here and meet my friends. Hey, this is Tanya. This is Kelly. These two are, I don't know, Anthony and Jessica. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now you've merged groups. And what I always say is when you go in these situations, you want to be like the MC, the master of ceremonies. You are responsible for everybody's entertainment. That's the way I need you to think. Look, getting that hot girl, it's not easy, bro. Like sometimes when I see a super hot girl in a nightclub, I'm like, fuck, dude, this is going to take so much energy. But it's cool because those girls give you energy. I don't know about you, but when I see a girl that's exactly my type, I'm filled with like 25 fucking days worth of pure energy to try to get that girl. And that's what's cool about it is that you are given the necessary tools you need just based off your own attraction. So you see her, you're like, all right, bro, it's campaign time. You meet different groups, you merge them together, and you start working over towards her and tell you, yes, introduce a group to her. Now, preferably, you're going to work up to the hottest girls you possibly can. And this too is chess, not checkers. You see a couple of sea donkeys. You're like, all right, I can open a sea donkey, no problem. You open them and then you introduce them to a couple of canyon mules. And you're like, okay, I got a little group here. And like Mark Singh said, it's better to have unattractive girls with me than no girls at all. So I'm okay with this. Then what you might do is see a solid seven or a solid eight and then introduce to them. And you guys are all talking. And then you're working over to the hot girl where eventually you're going to open her with people with you. Very important. Rather than going in solo, which can be done too, but it takes a shit ton of confidence and a shit ton of frame, and you got to be warmed up, which you have to do anyway with the method I'm teaching you, you could do it. And for those of you who are good, you could roll up straight to a hot girl, which I've done many times. And just be like, hey, what's up? Thought you were cute. Had to come meet you. My name is Mark. What's up? What's your name? Or hey, what's up? You looked interesting. Had to come meet you. My name is Mark. What's your name? 
She might frame check you. She might give you some shit. That's a different episode to which you can pass. Once you pass it, you get her attracted. You're off to the races. And this is why I always tell you, this is a skill set that you have to practice. You don't just listen to one podcast and then suddenly become an expert at seducing women. It's not the way it works. And I'm the one coach that's going to tell you the truth. That bullshit that you see on the internet, which is like, say these six magical words and this girl will jump into the air and slide onto your dick. Bullshit, bro, Tendo. It doesn't fucking exist. This is a skill set. And more importantly, you got to change you. I want you back to your original self-esteem where you feel you're the hot chick. You know you're worth it. And you roll up on her like, dude, I'm the fucking prize. Who are you? Now, you don't necessarily say that. You're cool. You're warm. You're fun. You don't give a shit what happens. But underneath, that's what you're thinking. And because you're thinking that underneath, your mannerisms, body language, and tonality is going to be correct. Going back to the first example, we get girls to come with us to open that girl. We're just merging groups. We're just having fun. Then you introduce them. And then, dude, you're off to the races. You tell stories, you use gambits, you include everybody, including, by the way, the hot girl's friend. Now, oftentimes, hot girls will roll with other hot girls, but sometimes they do have a mountain troll with them to which you need to neutralize. Let me ask you this. How do you neutralize the cock block? Cock block is the girl who's going to fly off the 50-yard line, flying horizontally above the grass to tackle you in the end zone, make you fumble. The other team gets it, and it's a fucking touchback. Is that what it's called? Safety? Touchback? I think it's safety. When the other team recovers a ball in the end zone, and then they get, like, what, three points? I don't know, dude. I'm more of a soccer fan, but I have been watching football lately. That shit's the bomb. By the way, watch Quarterback on Netflix. So good. So good. That's the mentality, dude. If you want to know what a champion's mentality is, go watch that fucking show. Quarterback on Netflix. It's about Mahomes, the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback, Mariota, Falcons quarterback, and the Vikings quarterback, Kirk Cousins. Even if you're living in a different country, Australia, England, it's a really good documentary. I was really impressed. I really like Mahomes' Uh, philosophy, the way he thinks, he wants that fucking pressure moment. When he got into the Super Bowl, it was so sick just how he handled it. He's like, let's go, dude. Let's win this shit. We're going to do us. This is how I roll. That's the way you got to be, brother. That's the way you got to be believing in yourself. So you roll up on this girl and you just run game. Then what you're going to do is neutralize that cock block who flew off the 50-yard line <laughs> flying horizontally, just fucking smacking you right in the end zone and making you fumble. How do you neutralize the cock block? I know I'm asking you guys a lot of questions. Here is the secret. You tell her she reminds you of your sister or your cousin. You say, hey, what's your last name? And she's like, oh, this, that, and the third. And you say, God, you remind me so much of my cousin. I swear to God, you were related. Actually, when I first saw you, I thought you were her. Give me a hug. You're my cousin now. We're best friends. Whatever you need, just ask that person over there. And then she laughs, right? You want to neutralize that cock block. Then you can focus on your target. Next thing you want to do is try to move the target to a different location. Moving a girl is super powerful. Even if you guys, yes, have met at a bowling alley or you're at a party or any other social event, you want to try to move her. And I move girls as soon as I get some compliance. Compliance means she's buying into what I'm talking about. She's engaged in the conversation. I might ask her a why question. So why are you wearing that tonight? It's freezing outside. You like have hardly any clothes on. How are you going to survive? Am I going to find you dead on the side of the street as I'm driving home? I'm like, oh, there's that chick who I met at the nightclub. Anyway, woo, and then I just keep driving home. And then she laughs. She's like, I don't know. I just wanted to wear this tonight. You get that kind of compliance, you can move her. You'd be like, come here. I want to introduce you to my friends, to which you met previously. Or, and this is always the better way, you bring girls with you. You guys might have a table or at least a spot that you have in the nightclub that you guys are all hanging out. You move her over there, introduce her, then say, come on, let's get a drink. In that situation, let me ask you this. Can you buy her a drink? I would suggest playing a game and whoever wins the game gets the drink bought for them. The game that I like the best is you hold a dollar bill and she holds her hand out like this and you drop it and she tries to catch it. If she catches it, you buy her the drink. If she misses it, she buys you the drink. Do you think having a girl buy you a drink is a good or a bad thing? 
For those of you who have been listening for any amount of time, you know the answer. It's a fucking good thing because she's working for you. Now you've neutralized her to the bar and you could really get to work. You're running stories, you're running gambits, all the things that I talk about in this podcast, but obviously more importantly, in my three-month coaching program, you're just fucking running your game. You're sticking to the plan, the four pillars of attraction. What are the four pillars of attraction? I feel like I'm doing a coaching call right now. What are the four pillars of attraction? Four pillars are frame control, value, sexual attention, qualifying. Brother, you're working that all in. It's simple. It's a formula to where I'm going to throw this in here. I'm going to throw this in. Make sure to do this. Make sure to do that. Yeah, it's easy for me to tell you that here. But when you get that banging ass fucking hot girl in front of you with the perfect ass and a face that looks like an angel herself, that literally you got to do the Mark Singh extra small underwear just preventing yourself from getting a boner, it's easier said than done. You're going to be like, what were the four pillars of a... Wait, what was I saying? Well, what's my last name again? Oh shit, I'm getting the boner, bro. Hey, excuse me, I got to go to the bathroom. And then you just blow yourself out like a fucking sea bass. Don't be that dude. How do you not be that dude? Practice, motherfuckers. Practice. Open, 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 practicing. You don't have to hit on girls. And in fact, we don't hit on girls in my program. All we do is talk to people and practice our gambits. You can go cold read somebody right now if you want to and just practice so that when you get in set, when you've neutralized that solid 10 with the perfect face, tits, ass, and tummy, you can think on your feet and you could just execute like a goddamn champion. So you execute all that shit. How many signs of attraction do you need before you go for the phone number? That's right. You're a smart motherfucker. Three signs of attraction at least, which include playing with their hair, laughing at jokes that are funny, touching you, leaning in, licking her lips, doing this thing where she puts one foot in front of the other. That's a big sign of attraction and basically being interested in the conversation. Going back to my previous episode, how to tell when a girl's not interested. Get those signs of attraction. Then what I want you to do is yank a phone number. The best way to yank a phone number is, you know what? You seem pretty cool. Why don't you toss me your number? Pretty simple. Hand her your phone. You seem pretty cool. Toss me your number. And then what I do is I eject. I always try to eject on a high note. I'm not trying to make out with her that night because I don't want to blow up my reputation as I've done many times. I'm not trying to take her home that night because I know that being patient and showing her that I'm not thirsty is more powerful than trying to yank. I'm not trying to get fucking anything from this chick other than a phone number. And then you text her the next day at 6 p.m. referring back to something you and her talked about. My favorite one is I always accuse them of being an ice cream man. So, hey, what do you do for a living? Let me guess, let me guess. You're an ice cream man, aren't you? And she's like, shut up. I'm not an ice cream man, blah, blah, blah. And then you do that whole gambit that I always talk about in this podcast. Then the next day at 6 p.m., you write her this text. So, hey, I saw an ice cream truck going 150 miles per hour down the 405 freeway. I know you're late for the ice cream man convention, but relax, you're gonna kill somebody. Do you think that, as opposed to, hey, it's Mark. I met you at the elbow room last night. Uh, how you doing? Your ass was so banging. I had to go home and masturbate to it. And it was the best goddamn orgasm I've ever had. Do you think that or the ice cream man example is better? Obviously, you fucking idiot. The ice cream man example. So we always want to be more interesting than the next dude. But more importantly, brothers, you have to be outcome independent. And that's the way you yank a girl, man. You got to think chess, not checkers. I'm going to utilize pivots. A pivot is another girl who you're not really into to open that girl. And sometimes it's fucked up. Like I'm going to admit, sometimes I've gotten girls like really attracted to me and then I'm just kind of using them to go open a hotter girl. And then she fades away and I see her next week and she mad dogs me. And then this is the way to blow out your reputation, but this is the way to do it. But the best way to do it is roll in with a couple of other girls. Yes, even unattractive girls, but better. Get some hot girls to come with you just meeting them through social circle, through hobbies, just your objective should be to meet hot girls. Roll in with even just two hot girls, it's over. You could go straight up to her. After you've paraded those girls around the bars and the nightclubs, which is what I do. I'll walk in, we're doing a lap. Come on, ladies, whew, let's do a lap. What, look at all the girls looking at me. Okay, dude, my social proof's up. I'm already 100 steps ahead where I would have been had I just been alone, but I could still do it alone. Why? Frame, tonality, confidence, believing in myself. I'm the fucking prize. And that's the way I want you guys to think. So remember, boys, this is a skill set. Anybody who tells you otherwise is lying to you. You think Mahomes just woke up one day with this skill to be a fucking NFL quarterback who wins the Super Bowl? No. 
The guy worked tirelessly his entire life. Now, fortunately, that's not what you need to do. But if you're really serious about this, you need to get proactive. You need to execute. And that's what we do in my three-month coaching program. The reason why I have a 95% success rate is because we work on the mind in conjunction with teaching you the tactics, in conjunction with accountability, weekly assignments, where you're actually going out there and talking to girls with no chance of rejection. Because remember, we don't put our intentions out there until she's attracted to us. So we ease you into it. Like an old man into a warm bath, his ball sack gingerly touching the water and entering it so that he doesn't get hurt and burn the hairs off his hairy ass ball sack. No, we ease you into it. We have accountability. We have a brotherhood that is pushing you just as you're pushing them. And that's what makes this so successful. It's the community, gentlemen, of accountability. And of course, the NLP. If you're not working on what's in here and I'm pointing at my head for those of you listening on audio, you're not going to progress. You just aren't. And then what we do is in three months, we make this an immersion phase where you decide, okay, it's time to get girls. Yeah, I know you guys have other things going on in your life. I'm working 40 hours a week and some of you even 60 or 80 hours a week. I have guys come into the program who literally work 70 hours a week and who still complete all the assignments, get girls, go on dates. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to leave a case study on the back of this episode. I'm going to do this over the next several episodes because I have been gathering case studies from my boys who have been through the program. I actually put an announcement out on the Facebook page like, hey, who wants to do case studies? So many guys wrote back. So I got 10 guys lined up right now. I'm knocking them out about two a day. I'm going to put one on the back of this so you could see just how effective it is. I'm telling you guys, guys are going from one date a month to 20 dates a month. They're going from a zero confidence to a 10 confidence. They're going from six girlfriends to goddamn 10 girlfriends consistently. I'm even impressed with the results. Like I'm interviewing these guys and I'm like pausing and I'm like, bro, is this really true? What's going on with you right now? Because they've graduated the program and we touch base once in a while. They're like, yeah, bro, it's fucking insane. So this program works. I really feel like I've discovered something that happens once in a generation. And I say that to you with utmost sincerity. So after the music finishes, we're going to put up that case study where I'm interviewing. I think we'll put up Dano on this one. That was a really good one. And you guys can check it out, see what you think. If you want to apply, the link's in the description below. Fill out the quick application. You and I are going to talk. Yes, you're going to talk to me. And then we're going to see if you're a good fit. And most importantly, if we're a good fit for you to get you the results that you really want. So gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. I hope you got something out of this podcast. But again, dude, you got to go execute. You can listen to this shit all day, hiding in your room, masturbating in a puddle of your own tears. It's until you motherfucking execute like a man, a masculine man, that you're going to get the results. So get to it, gentlemen. You only live once. And for all you know, you'll get hit by a bus and launched into outer space tomorrow, dead as a doornail and regretting, did I get this part of my life solved? Do it, brother. It is worth it. I draw a podcast on Mondays and Thursdays, so please stay tuned for the next one, and I will see you in the next episode. Ah! on a scale of one to 10, what would you say your approach anxiety was before you came into the program? 12. It, it was just ridiculous. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah. I mean, like to the point where I would like fidget and things like that. When, when girls would come near me that I thought were attractive, I'd like fidget and like, I, I don't know what to do. Heart would pound, all that type of stuff. So we often teach, and you know this, that there's always a belief system behind those kinds of anxious reactions what do you think your belief system was? What, what was it that you were going up against when you came into the program? So like, did I have anything to really like stay? Did I know what to say? Where was the conversation going to go? You know, I'd look around and say like, ah, oh, maybe I'm not like fit enough to talk to this person yet. Or maybe I, I'm not their type. And, and I kind of just like thought about all the negatives that could happen rather than all the positives that could happen. So what was it about the NLP that was able to shift that belief system? What do you think it was that was removed and replaced that allowed you to just go crazy approaching? Because I remember, man, you were going off. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. It was like the first one. So I did the first NLP and I just felt good the first morning of the program and said, screw it. I'm just, uh, I'm just walking up to the hottest person I see. And it was so easy. She was so nice. She 
gave like extra feedback and like it was such a positive conversation that every conversation after that just got a little bit easier and with the NLP going kind of working on my brain I could walk up to anybody 3 weeks later it was it was crazy yeah it usually runs just that fast because we hit belief systems in that first week, right? I'm not enough. You shouldn't approach girls and we're just removing them. So then you're like, wait a minute, why did I buy into that bullshit? And then you just do it, realize it's not that bad on top of getting things to talk about and then your success goes. So I want to ask you, you started with the 12 out of 10 anxiety, approach anxiety. Today, uh, recently after graduating, what would you say your approach anxiety is now? I don't have it at all. I, I can literally walk up to anybody. I mean, it's it's anything now. Like if you're wearing a purple shirt, I'll be like, yo, you look like Barney today. What's going on? Like I, <laughs> it's just, it's coming so quickly that I can create conversation basically out of anything, out of thin air. And and before you were relying on the dating apps, do you even mess with the dating apps anymore? Or is it mostly just like, no. yeah? No, not at all. I mean, you get the same type of person, I feel like over and over, like that that attention seeking type of person. And, and that's not really what I was looking for. I was looking for something more quality, basically. So I understand you have quality now. What you got? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say a solid 10. Uh, short little Mexican girl. She's uh, she's a cutie. We've been doing things for, for a little while now. So it's it's going nice. I like it. So what would you say your confidence was like before and then after the program? How much did that increase? Uh, it increased like tenfold. So, you know, basically the the program keeping you um, like keeping you on track, like you, you're meeting with five other guys, 10 other guys a week, and they all have these awesome stories about all these people they approach. And like, I didn't want to be the person that wasn't doing the approaches every week. So like keeping myself accountable every week made my confidence go up. And, you know, I'm basically kept the promise to myself and to all the guys in the program that I was going to talk to 20 people a week to the point where I probably got 40 people a week by the end. Um, and just keeping yourself accountable and being able to share stories with a bunch of dudes who are going through the same issues you're going through. It was so cool. That was, that was the best part for me. All right, brother. My last question. Do you think the program was worth it? it? It was obviously an investment. Do you feel that that investment was worth it? It, it definitely was. And it's funny you say that because there's, there was like, I mean, I guess I've been out of it for, for six months now, which is insane to me. And I thought, you know what? If I can get some extra money, I might just join it every year just to do it again and just like get that camaraderie with the guys again in person. I think it would be so cool, but it, it absolutely was worth it. It, it was amazing. Thank you so much, brother. Really do appreciate you. Enjoy that beautiful weather today, man. We'll talk soon. Thanks, man.